Not since George Foreman KO'd Joe Roman in 1973 has a World Heavyweight Championship fight taken place in Tokyo. Within two hours of the champion's arrival here, Tyson Mania was in full cry. So I really would like thank you graciously to invite me to your country and I look forward to giving you a good show. Immediately, the realization that the experiences of this fight would be like none other before it. No one speaks English. In the days that followed, millions of Japanese seemed totally mesmerized by the American chance. It was as if Godzilla, the movie monster of the 1950s, had returned to Tokyo. Here the heavyweight champion's every move has been watched and followed. Even at 4 o'clock in the morning, photographers waited for the chase for one more picture opportunity. It's scary. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind being the champ of the world and getting the attention I get in America, but, you know, this is a whole different dimension once you leave your country and you're a bigger star in other countries than you are in your own country. I mean, that's kind of, it's frightening to me, it is, you know what I mean? Because I never, I didn't never want to be a super, superstar. I just wanted to be the champion of the world. In the beginning, most Japanese knew little about Mike Tyson. But as each day passed here, he became exactly the center of attention he claimed he didn't want to be. Oh, this man. Giant. He is a symbol of the United States. Even the children found a way to get into the action. So on the first day tickets went on sale, 80% of them were sold. Whether an autograph, a photograph, or just a brief touch, everyone wanted a piece of the champion destroyer from the West. I don't feel bad. I feel like I left Earth and went to another planet. I never experienced anything like that before in my life around a bunch of people just floundered around me and were so excited to just be around me. It was an experience I don't know if I will experience again. I feel everyone should know who the world champion is. And in my mind, before I ever traveled to another country to, the, to fight in a world championship contest, I thought, yeah, everyone should know the champion of the world. But God, man, I, I would have took second thoughts if I knew it would have been like this. is described by a new term in the Japanese language. It is called gaitare. It refers to foreign celebrities who are brought here by the overwhelming economic power of the yen currency as opposed to other world currencies. Now joining Madonna, Michael Jackson, and Mick Jagger as gaitare is Mike Tyson. And the interesting thing here is we were led to believe that the Japanese fans would view this more as a show, uh, but and that they don't, they sit on their hands a lot. But they are truly as excited as as people led us to believe they were underneath their impassive masks. Of course, if you have seen Tyson before, you are aware of what is called the gladiator look. No robe, no towels, no socks, just the black trunks, the boots, and the 10 ounce Everlast gloves. Mike Tyson is 21 and a half years old, unbeaten in 33 fights with 29 knockouts. He went 12 rounds to a decision twice. This is his sixth title defense as heavyweight champ, the third defense as holder of the championship in the eyes of all three governing bodies. Because of a conflict between local promoters and the International Boxing Federation, only the WBA and WBC title belts are being billed in Japan in connection with the fight. But in reality and in the eyes of boxing fans, it is the unified title which is at stake. And right now, let's go up to our ring announcer, Michael Buffer, whom the Japanese promoters have flown over from Philadelphia in the United States. Michael Buffer will deliver the pre-fight introductions. その結果幸いに両選手ともに全てが的確でありましたので私はこの試合を
This, of course, is the Japanese ring announcer who is providing initial instructions for Japanese fans here as to the principles in the ring. And now Michael Buffer takes over the mic. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Konnichiwa! Good afternoon. This championship belt is a presentation of Taking Boxing Promotions, President Akiko Honda. It is sanctioned by the Japan Boxing Commission, Commissioner Makoto Hosaka, and the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman. The World Boxing Association is represented by Championship Committee Chairman Dr. Elias M. Cordova, Jr. The ringside supervisor is Gabriel Peña Garicano. He's the WBC General Counsel. The three judges are Larry Rosadilla of the United States, Masakutsu Uchida of Japan, and Ken Morita of Japan. And working for the 78th time in a world title belt is the referee, Arthur Mercanti of the United States. And now, ladies and gentlemen, to all the millions and millions of boxing fans watching around the world, welcome to the Tokyo Dome, the Big A, right here in one of the greatest cities in the world, Tokyo, Japan. I would like to introduce in, this, in the ring at this time, a man known as one of the premier promoters in the world of boxing, Mr. Don King. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble 12 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing his boxing trunks and weighing 238 and one quarter pounds with a professional record of 24 victories, 15 by knockout and only one defeat from Cincinnati, Ohio. He is the second ranked heavyweight in the world and a former heavyweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, the challenger, Tony TNT Cole. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks and weighing 216 and one quarter pounds from Catskill, New York, which is the hometown of the late great trainer of champions, Customato. He brings a professional record of 33 victories without a loss, 29 KOs, including 25 KOs in five rounds or less, and 15 in the first round alone. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the undisputed, the undefeated, heavyweight champion of the world, Mike and Tony, you both received instructions earlier in the day and therefore you know the rules. I wish you both an awful lot of luck now. Return to your corners to await the starting bell. Good luck. That's Arthur McCanty doing his sixth heavyweight championship fight, his 78th world championship fight. Tubb says he knows how to fight. The champion, everyone says it. It's a little bit more difficult to pull it off. Let's see if he really wants to rumble as he says he does. I see Mike Tyson iron the uh, belly, the midsection of Tony Tubb, so look for him to jump right on in the first round. Okay. All set. All set. Go. Mercanti says they're all set, and there's the bell for round one. Tubb throws the jab, and Tyson responds in time. Oh, you're right, man. A lot of fighters find it difficult to uh, set Mike Tyson up because Mike now gives a lot of uh, head movement. All right, break! And I say break, stop, break! One of the big questions has been whether Tubbs would clinch and grab and simply try to survive with Tyson, as did Bone Crusher Smith and Mitch Green. For now, it does not look that way. Six, four! 
Well, Tuff stated that he would just exchange punches with uh, Tyson because the best way he felt to beat him was to be inside, throw short punches, combinations. And here he selected to do that. I don't necessarily agree with that, Jim, because what happens, Tyson, with his shorter arms and upper body strength, is able to uh, do a great deal of damage to the midsection of his opponent. Watch for the left hook by Mike Tyson. Cubs trying to go downstairs to Tyson's body. You see the left jab of Mike Tyson. He's starting to use it more consistently now. He found, he found out that it gets a man into punching range. And you can begin to see the startling hand quickness that Tubbs brings. Startling partially because of the shape of his body. Well, here with Tubbs, the uppercut. I also know the uppercut of Mike Tyson. He's able to throw it, throw the same punch twice, and then over. Tyson missed with the left hook. Earlier, he had landed a wicked right to the killer kidney. Look for a looping right hand by Mike Tyson because that's the punch I see that uh, Tubbs is vulnerable to. He keeps dropping that left hand. One minute to go in round one. Tubbs landed a left and ducked away effectively. You know what to do, what Tuff needs to be doing now, he needs to throw two and three jabs to kind of break the rhythm of Mike, because what's happening, Tyson's starting to set up. You need to break that rhythm with a jab. Tubbs throwing the uppercut. A lot of people think he will have to be effective with that punch because Tyson comes in constantly. Well, Tyson also lunged him with an overhand right there. And that's one of the mistakes he makes. Ten seconds to go in round one. I thought Tubbs fought a very effective round. I gave him the round, he landed some hooks, and he went to the body as promised. Remember he told us that nobody has gone to Mike Tyson's body so far. The voice is that of trainer Kevin Rudy. Come here, Mike. Come here, Mike. Oh, you got it? The talking in Tubbs' corner was done by trainer Odell Hadley. So now Hadley and Rooney have had their minute, and round two begins. Tubbs keeping that right hand up because of the left hook of Mike Tyson. But also, you notice now you see a much more relaxed Tony Tubbs. So now his punches are being right, more wait, fluid. Look at Tyson with the rapid fire three jabs in a row. Something new within the past year. Well, Tyson is starting to improve each time he steps into the ring. But what I see here in Tubbs, Tubbs is pretty much trying to get range so he can drop his right hand because in this corner they told him to drop the right hand. The left hook lands, but he needs to come back with the right hand. There's the right hand, Jim, I spoke earlier about. You must give Tyson angles. You can't remain stationary. Hands must stay up and stay out of the corners. But indeed, Tony acknowledged in talking with us, Ray, that you couldn't finesse Tyson completely. You have to be willing, as he said, to fight him. Well, you saw that, that double punch with one hand, sort of a bolo-type punch. And those are the type of punches that do a great deal of damage because the body shot, then the uppercut. Raises the chin up, and then the left hook comes into play. Good uppercut by Tubbs inside. Snap Tyson back a little. Six rounds. 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 Six roun
Tubbs has to be very careful. You notice he put both feet together, and it's easy to be knocked down or knocked off balance. Watch out! He's trying to use his additional weight. Coming up on a minute to go in round two. Tony Tubbs so far appears in no way intimidated by Tyson's fury, as have so many of his opponents. Good left hook. Good, good combination by Tubbs. You know, Tubbs just trying to gain respect, and I think he's done that. Good left by Tyson. Tubbs real. Those hands must be kept up higher. And again, like I stated earlier, Jim, I don't think it's a good idea to change punches with Tyson. Good body shot, but you need combinations then. 30 seconds left in the round. Both fighters have had their say here. I couldn't tell whether the punch hurt. Tubbs is hurt. Tubbs is hurt badly. It was a left hook. And it's over. Odell Hadley has jumped in the ring. The fight is over. With stunning swiftness. And the fans are enjoying. They show their appreciation here. All right, Mike Tyson, it seemed that Tony Tubbs went right at you and tested you and you were a little bit too strong for him but he was effective until you hurt him well he was effective because i planned it that way i was looking for the opening because i planned for him to run and then when i saw he he came such a easy target to hit i was just planning and planning and he had his hand, hands up very high i was surprised that he had his hands up so high and so i started hitting to the body and bringing it up in the middle and then as soon as he brought his hands i saw his eyes and i aimed right for his eyes he said that nobody had ever gone to your body before and he wanted to try you there. He did hit, hit you a few b blows there. Did he hurt you at all, not distract at all. you even? Not at all. My, my mission is to go and destroy and not to let anything get involved. You get punched, you get hurt. I refuse to be hurt, knocked down, and knocked out. I can't lose. I refuse to lose. What was your response to the audience here, which is kind of quiet compared to the crowds in America? Did you I, hear anything or not, not at all? Anything? Not at all. I knew there were people scratching me when I was coming through, but I had such an intense tunnel vision. I just my, my objective was just to get in there and get my hands on my opponent. When he didn't come out moving and jabbing and doing those kind of things, what was your first thought about well, that? Well, I said, well, this is going to be a complicated fight. It's going to be a fight. He came to fight. And, you know, and I was, I, for the last moment, I prepared for him to just come out swinging because Kevin said he's going to come out and try to rough you. Did he at all try to rough you up? Absolutely. I, I, felt, I felt the tip of his... Um, glove around my eye. I don't know if it was the thumb, but in fighting, you're in a hurt business. You can't complain. And he was there to complain. Is it just a question, do you feel, that no matter what anybody's plan is, that your power will negate any plan? Our plan is better. <laughs> Our plan is, we just, the objective is to win. We don't fight by book techno technology or anything. We come to fight the authentic way. When you see a man come out and he's obviously that out of shape and heavy, does that lull you in any way in the first round? Not at all, not at all. That was his prerogative to come out the way he did. My job is to finish him off. You see, someone, if he would have went 10 rounds, 6 rounds, 7 rounds, then someone could say something critical towards my performance. But he came out, he came in, he, was a, he came out a tough performance. He didn't come like a guy that just came to pick up a payday. He got hit with a solid shot. It looked like it was above the eye, but I tried hitting exactly in the eye. And... He took a, a great shot and he went down. But if he, if he were the last six or seven rounds and he was out of shape, then you could criticize me. But he came to fight, and if anybody could criticize that he was out of shape, I did what's supposed to have been done to a person that was out of shape. I got rid of him quick.